slides come up, it's funny in the, uh, the, the age old world of healthcare, three letter acronyms mean a lot of things. And as a physician, if you told me five years ago that I'd be coming to a conference on AWS, uh, sponsored by AWS, I'd say the first thing is what disease is that and what do you want me to talk about? So with that caveat, uh, with my expertise in technology, I have our chief architect who will uh, support me in the technical aspect of the discussion. I began my career 30 years ago in this town as a medical student. And unfortunately, in the last 30 years, while some things have changed in healthcare, better transplants and very kind of highly technical things, a lot of the problems around cost, quality and access remain what they were really uh, back in the, the late 80s and early 90s. And my view on this, and, and which is a core theme about what you're hearing today, and, and certainly what we're focused on Abacus, is that there's an information asymmetry in our healthcare system. Providers, uh, the b most well-intentioned physicians, uh, don't know which patients they should pr prescribe what drugs to because evidence-based guidelines don't take into account social factors, behavioral factors, dietary factors that confound how a drug works. Um, patients, uh, individuals, all of you, when you get sick or feel like you're getting sick, don't know do I need care or not? And if you do need care, who should I go to? And if I go to this person, are they any good? And if I, they are good, what are they gonna cost me even if you've got the best insurance in the world? So that information asymmetry is embedded and underpinned and that is a lot of what you heard about today uh, because of the data asymmetry. There's the fact that data has been in silos, uh, whether it's paper uh, or in digital solutions of the last 10, 20 years as one of the fundamental issues that have, have plagued our system. And so. At Abacus Insights, we're maniacally focused on trying to bring that data liquidity uh, into, the, the, uh, into the ecosystem to solve some of those fundamental problems. Um, candidly, from our perspective, why now, different than 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Well, two main reasons. One, we think that uh, digitization has come to healthcare. First of all, the EMRs out there, whether you like them or not, whether you argue why they were created or not, you know, have digitized a lot of the in information that happens between a doctor and a patient. Uh, similarly, the Internet of Things have allowed wearables and consumables, and again, you are all technologists, you know this, to capture data and, and have it more monitored in a more streamlined and efficient fashion. The question is, can that data be brought together and integrated to create value? And today, the second thing that's happened, and we thank AWS and others uh, for leading the charge, is bringing the technologies in a highly scalable and leverageable way to bring those data together and actually be, uh, create the meaningful insights that are required in order to not just create the data interoperability, the information inf interoperability, the insights and decision making that ultimately allow us to make better choices, whether we're individuals, patients, actuaries at an insurance company, or, or all of the above. So Abacus Insights, we're focused in, uh, in, in that equation, not so much on the provider side. Uh, we decided that the payer was the place to focus. Why? Partly because we come from the payer. I spent a, a lot of years inside and outside payers. But more importantly, if you listen to the previous speakers, Apervita, if you listen to what uh, our colleague at Aver had to say, uh, really um, there's lots of uh, uh, in innovation happening between the payer and provider interface. Within the provider systems themselves, a bunch of apps and applications being developed. But when you take a step into the payer land, into the data ecosystem and the technology ecosystem of the payer itself, it's still quite Byzantine. And that Byzantine isn't a criticism of the payer, again, considering myself a payer guy, it's the nature of how payers have evolved over the, over the years. And so on the payer side, lots coming at them, needing data to solve these issues particularly, but because their systems are so siloed and, and, and technically uh, in, in much more legacy uh, environments, payers are still deciding, is the cloud safe enough for me? Much further uh, behind than where the rest of the ecosystems evolved, we believe there's a unique opportunity to provide value. So what we've done, is brought a solution to the market that, again, payer focused to allow the payer to ingest, manage, and organize all the forms of data that a payer needs, structured and unstructured. Think claims, membership, eligibility, enrollment. Those are all structured data sets, fairly standardized, even though they're different versions and uh, lots of uh, com and complexity, but also unstructured data, call center recordings, uh, uh, notes that are being sent in by providers. Data that uh, payers are theoretically exchanging with providers today, and I would argue most of the provider and payer data exchange today still happens in spreadsheets. Secure encrypted spreadsheets, but still in spreadsheets. We've gotta stop that. And thirdly, when you think about all the innovation happening with the digital solutions, a place where that data can be housed. That's what the platform is, and Doug will talk about the technologies and how we leverage uh, the capabilities to get there. Obviously, in our industry, privacy and security, a paramount concern. We thank AWS for advancing its maturity 
not just in the technology aspect of it, but from the compliance and, co and contractual aspect to allow us to leverage these capabilities to advance the ecosystem forward. And like the previous speaker, we are on the path of being high trust certified as well. All of this is to spar spur and spark innovation. We believe that if we solve the data problem on the payer side and connect to companies like Apervita, the 29 million members worth of claims data that Aver is receiving will become more, far more efficient than even today that can happen and will allow many of you to leverage our platform to create some of that innovation uh, that we think will move the entire ecosystem forward. So that really is the objective of, of why we exist. Now, a, a, a platform without uh, use cases is an IT project that nobody wants to fund or, or fund, and it's struggling here, thank you. I told you I wasn't a technologist, <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, one before that. There you go. Yeah, um, oops, sorry. A platform without uh, any use cases attached to it is an IT project. So from our perspective, the three main types of use cases we enable with our platform, one, all the things that touch a member. Member, consumer, individual, subscriber, employer, broker, these are all constituents important to a health plan. Most of the companies that focus in this space don't look at the health plans ecosystem in its entirety. They'll look at the provider side of it. They'll look at the broker side of it. We're looking at this from its entirety. So when we serve a health plan, it's not just for clinical capability. It's not just for cost capability or consumer experience capability. It's for all of those capabilities, right? So the consumer is an important constituent. The provider is an important constituent. And then the how the health plan operates, that's an important constituent. We're not building the application layer on that. We're working with companies, and you, many of them you're meeting today, and, and hopefully they're innovators in the crowd that we would love to talk to, that based upon a common data model, where we can bring that data in in a secure way, in an efficient way, serve that data up so that innovation can happen with uh, individuals and, and, and companies that understand how to take that data and, can, and, and create the ultimate value for the end consumer, the end provider, or whatever the end application needs to be. Our view is that all the money that's gone into in the innovation has gone into creating the application layer with a data model and a tech stack that serves that use case. Why would you do anything else? But that has created that one is to one interaction and implementation that you've heard previous speakers talk about. The integration between a payer typically takes six to 12 to 18 months, costs between half a million to a million and a half dollars for any capability that you want to go live. Our goal is to shrink that down to days to maybe weeks and for tens of thousands of dollars to bring capability. So that's really what this is about ultimately with the end consumer, the patient in mind, so that, that the cost quality uh, and, and uh, experience challenge that 30 years ago that I learned about in this, uh, in this city uh, goes away. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Doug Basher, our architect, the chief architect to talk more about the technology and how we do this, how we're working with AWS and talk about a, a few specific use cases as well.